Pursuant to Office of Oni Retrieval and Acquisitions Inquiry of 26 September 2552, the following is a target profile of Thel Vadami, Supreme Commander of the Covenant Fleet of Particular Justice compiled by Lieutenant Commander Locke. First confirmed contact with Vadami came in 2535 on an unofficial human colony known as the Rubble. After action reports from civilians, as well as Spartan Units 006, 111, and 120, suggest that Vatami was at that point a relatively minor functionary of the Prophet of Regret. Spartan 006 engaged Vatami in combat on the run. Both parties survived the encounter. Shortly after 2535, the UNSC first encountered the newly formed Covenant Fleet of Particular Justice, now led by Vatami. Review of early engagements with this fleet show that it quickly grew in size from 5 to nearly 60 ships as Vatami cut a path in many human systems. Oni Section 3 made multiple attempts to anticipate or even track Vatami's movements at the cost of a number of operative lives. Vatami eluded all such efforts and he continued his unpredictable and devastating campaign. Vatami also stands out from other Covenant commanders in the frequency in which he takes a personal role in ground assaults. Camber was a major manufacturing center for UNSC fleet materials with a population of 5.6 million. After discovering Camber's location, Vatami penetrated the early warning perimeter without alerting UNSC forces and began his ground and orbital attacks before most of the planet knew they were in danger. While 17 of his ships bombed key defensive positions, Vatami led a group of elites in a personal assault on UNSC System HQ. One of the first units to engage Vatami was the 3rd Battalion Reserves, who were so unprepared for the arrival of the Covenant forces that Vatami found them unarmed and defenseless. In an unexpected display of what appears to be honor, Vatami allowed the 3rd to finish gearing up before engaging them in combat. While we've had multiple reports of a strict system of honor and ritual behavior followed by the elites within the Covenant, this is the first recorded example of such honor being shown to human opponents. But even given the chance to defend themselves, 3rd Battalion losses were complete. Vatami continued his campaign across many human systems, culminating in his most devastating blow against the UNSC at Reach. Vatami's most recent and damaging blow to the UNSC was the fall of Reach. Oni has still not been able to fully determine how Vatami located the planet, and once again, he caught us completely by surprise when his forces arrived in orbit and on the ground. Vatami is responsible for over one billion total casualties and the loss of at least seven human planets. His forces have defeated all UNSC counterattacks at the cost of 123 fleet vessels and over 23,000 personnel. And now with Reach lost, Oni and UNSC strategic AI report a 0% confidence that the Navy can stop Vatami through traditional means. In the opinion of this investigator, 
Batami is the most dangerous Covenant military asset on the field. It's common knowledge that the Covenant have a significant technological advantage over the UNSC, but are sometimes inflexible in their tactics. This is not the case for Batami. We cannot predict what he'll do next, but given time, we fear he will dismantle all remaining UNSC strongholds. This agent's recommendation, immediate termination. If humanity wants to survive this war, we cannot do it with Batami on the field. Acceptable. Glorious day. The prophets will be pleased that we have rescued an oracle from the human's violation of the Holy Temple. Why do you keep calling it a temple? My installation was a weapon, and one which we needed very, very badly. But Oracle, I do not understand. We were told the rings are salvation, a gateway to paradise. Told? By whom? Anyone who told you that is a fool, or quite, quite mad. That installation was a beautiful tool, designed to destroy everything the Flood might feed on. Everything? Oh, quite everything. And if even one flood spore survived the destruction of my ring... Communications. Shut down all lines to the fleet. We will not notify the prophets of our discovery until I hear everything this oracle has to say. I will gladly share what I am permitted, but we have little time. What has been unleashed here could destroy everything you have ever known. On that, oracle, we are in agreement. Your actions do not make sense. Proper protocol for a flood outbreak is to establish immediate infection reporting. Communications must be maintained with all local forces in order to track any spread of the parasite. There are no local forces, Oracle. For now, all you have is me. But I tracked multiple ships in orbit, including some remaining human presence. In light of the danger posed by the Flood, surely you can set aside this disagreement with the humans No! Anything still alive in orbit is our enemy. The humans have very good cause to kill us on sight. And the knowledge you've shared with me casts doubt on the entire purpose of our Covenant. If any of our ships remain above us, they are not the help you seek. But why would they not provide assistance? Because of this talk of prophecies and journeys? I learned a small amount about your covenant before that reclaimer blew up my installation. But my understanding is incomplete. The AI I encountered on board one of your ships was less than forthcoming. What you need to know, Oracle, is that thousands of years ago, at the founding of our great covenant, a bargain was struck between the prophets and the elites. A bargain which I fear will be the end of us.
Regarding the history of the Covenant and its glorious founding species, the San Shayum and Sanghili, the record of punished deeds would not be sufficient without a word on the Arbiter. Not the consignment of shame that it is currently, but what came before, the legendary warriors of Sanghili past. Long before the Covenant, the Sanghili ruled their world with pride and vigilance, surviving the perils of both land and sea. These were the arbiters of old, part king, part judge, warrior rulers, unlike any of which would follow. When we arrived on their frontier world of Olgathon, the cost of life was severe. Led by a mighty arbiter, the Sanghili resisted our entreatment with ruthless force, leading to decades of war. We would eventually triumph, of course. And when we did, we would not ignore the mantle of the Arbiter. Like all things, we would bend the Sanghili to our own ends. The Arbiters would become the very will of the Prophets. Our access to sacred sites, damage, holy relics for their transgressions. The humans shall be hunted until... For generations, our holy arrangement put the prophets in charge of religion and technology. The elites led our military forces to convert new species and find relics such as your halo. And these relics you sought, the San Shayun, your prophets, told you that they would lead you on this great journey? Yes. Transcendence. Eternal life. Their promises were endless. We gave up our old ways to follow the Prophet's lead on the great journey. Gave up all of our history. All of our traditions. Not all of your traditions, it seems. This Arbiter you mentioned, hasn't that always been a position of power for your species? Power? It was long ago. An Arbiter was once the pinnacle of our people, leader of the clans, and master of the battlefield. But then, an Arbiter committed heresy, and an example was made of him. Heresy? He challenged the word of the Prophets, challenged and lost. So the title of Arbiter became a badge of shame for our most spectacularly failed warriors. Hmm, yes. They were accomplished manipulators. Back before the firing of the Array. I see at least that hasn't changed. Manipulators? What? And before? Before when? I will explain later. Right now I want you to tell me everything you can of these Arbiters. The city was not always as it is, nor was the Covenant. At one time, it was only San Shayum and Sanghili, but as we grew, and new species were added to our number, radical steps had to be taken. 
Our first encounter with the Let Golo was an effort in futility. The blasphemous creatures had devoured a forerunner orbital, shattering its remains into a trillion pieces. What was left became the rings of Tay. As no conventional methods could purge the rings of their infestation, we sent one of our most faithful, an Arbiter. For a full year, this Arbiter ventured across the surface of one of their moons, learning both their strengths and their weaknesses. It was there that we discovered the Let Golo secret. Although some of their kind rightly bore the blame for the orbital's desecration, others had only devoured around the forerunner materials. And with reasoning and much labor, these could be used to serve the Covenant. And by these means, the Great Arbiter had given us one of our most sought-after treasures access to innumerable processing pathways of the mighty forerunner Dreadnought, and to the many secrets it held. It is most unusual that in all the exploits of these Arbiters, you never mention their role in choosing their missions of redemption. There is no role, Oracle. Once one of our commanders becomes an Arbiter, he belongs to the Hierarchs. These Hierarchs, they are the same High Prophets who control all the holy relics you collect from my time? The same. And they use these relics to build your new weapons, and bring you the word of your gods? It has always been so. Interesting. Am I a holy relic? I... I do not understand. Because I am certainly not a god. I am a tool, as is this mining platform you stand upon. As was the installation that once orbited the planet. The Forerunner's technology is lasting and indeed quite powerful, but I'm quite certain they would have told me if I was infused with some kind of divine power. I suspect some of your prophets may have been quite aware of how much divine inspiration tools such as myself could provide. And you never question these proclamations. Even your mightiest warriors, these Arbiters, never question? Questioning was what brought shame to the word Arbiter long ago, Oracle. How disappointing. I fear now that there are many questions we should have been asking for a long, long time. I would be more than happy to answer any such questions, but I have a few more for you. Continue your tale of these Arbiters. Whereas most species were grafted into the Covenant by faith or mutual beneficence, the Ungoi were not such. Their kind was brought into the fold by force, and it was by force that they were held captive. Their world had no prayer against our might and majesty, and their peoples were quickly laid low, many of them brought into subjugation. Yet while some species would perish under such pressure, others rise to the occasion, taking arms if need be, fighting back. Such it was for the Ungoy when their feud with the Kigyar led to rebellion. 
An effort by the Kigyar to sterilize the Ungoy population was met with stiff resistance. And for a time, the holy city was thrown into chaos. Once fully provoked, the Ungoy were merciless in their violence, lashing out at all species. Their large numbers and their tenacious volatility made them a suitable challenge, even for the elites. And yet again, we turned to an arbiter. And with a ferocity unparalleled since the beginning of the Covenant, the Ungoy world would be reduced to glass. Those within the Holy City would be forced to watch, unable to stop what could have been the very end of their kind. The Ungoy Rebellion was brought to an end by the Arbiter's hand. Their world was not completely lost, and those who survived within high charity found some measure of mercy. They had proven their worth in combat and would now serve alongside the Sangheili in battle. I'm starting to fear that you're not very smart. Mind your tongue, Oracle. Oh, I mean no offense. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about your species. How long have these prophets been anointing Arbiters? Since the fall of Falchavami, the first disgraced Arbiter. Roughly 400 years ago. Incredible! And in all this time, it never occurred to you how convenient it was that your prophets were able to find a powerful, capable leader among your people, who happened to suddenly commit a terrible blasphemy every time the power structure of your covenant was threatened. I do not understand. Hmm, you do little to dissuade my fears. Then teach me. Looking back at the record of the Arbiters you discussed, was it not surprising to anyone that those chosen to become Arbiter were more than simple warriors? How so? Each of them had significant political influence among your people. In some cases, that influence was already being used to question the decisions of your hierarchs. In fact, that very questioning often gave rise to the charges of heresy that so neatly removed the challenger from the hierarch's concern. And once they were branded Arbiter, they promptly and quite cheerfully ran to meet their deaths. All our lives we look down at the path, put our feet where the prophets tell us. All our lives spent convincing ourselves of the truth of our covenant. Could all of it truly have been wasted? Let's hope not all of it, for we have a great deal of work to do. The Flood is still out there, so I require a cooperative reclaimer to enact proper containment procedures. But your Covenant keep trying to kill all the reclaimers I can find. All this bickering is quite a deadly waste of time. Right now, the most important question we can ask is this. Who could break this hold the Prophets have over you? The history of the Arbiter is one of both legend and infamy. Their name has been corrupted by great shame, though the contemporary is perhaps the most confounding of all. Thel Vadimi was born of noble blood, the legendary House of Vada. His family's renown demanded great expectations for his military career, and he would meet them all. One of 
the youngest to achieve the status of shipmaster, and one of the youngest to gain the rate of supreme commander. In our campaign against the humans, few have risen to renown as Vadami. World after human world, all laid low for the sake of the great journey. But then came Halo. Shame unto shame. He failed his greatest charge, and the sacred ring was desecrated. By such disgrace, Del Vadimi became the Arbiter. As a mere scribe, I do not challenge the word of the Hierarchs, but I would be remiss not to voice concern. This Sangheili should have been put down, publicly slain as an example to all of our prayerful expediency. With the discovery of a second ring and the changing of the guard, all things are in jeopardy. Will this Arbiter remain loyal? Or will he stand with his people as they are abolished by our newfound might? I would never openly challenge the divine proclamations of a hierarch, but this Arbiter is a risk I would not have tolerated. And I now fear the days of the Covenant This information is probably dead right now. He was commander of the fleet that brought me to the system. Fel Vadimi was his name. But after hearing you tell of the destruction of the ring, I cannot believe that he still lives. His orders were to secure the ring, to prepare it for the arrival of the Hierarchs. Vadimi never fails in his duties. If the ring is no more, then Vadimi must be dead. Duty can indeed be a dangerous virtue. But even if he did live, wouldn't this sense of duty make him quite unlikely to set aside his allegiance to the Prophets? Perhaps not. And he would never betray our people. No, if I... if we were able to just speak to him, explain everything you have told me, no, these are futile hopes. If he did live, and if he was returned to the High Prophets, they would most certainly punish him for the destruction of the Ring. In fact, he would be the exact kind of leader the Hierarchs would make Arbiter. They would need someone to blame for the loss of the Ring. His influence within the fleet grew with every one of his victories over the humans. And if he did become Arbiter? Then he would be lost to our cause. Without the knowledge you've shared with me, he would obey the prophets without question. I doubt he would even respond to his former name. I don't know what it would take to overcome, but as you say, we don't have time to ask such questions, and Vadimi is almost certainly dead. If all your hopes rest on him, then I fear for the future of this galaxy. As do I, Oracle. As do I. But I will begin our fight. Make others aware of the lies the Prophets whisper in our ears. And soon, we will find more who will take up our cause. <laughs> 